Okay, so I would like to show you uh, why and how you can use G Suite um, to support your virtual exchanges. So you're probably very familiar with Google and having a Google account, and you may have already multiple accounts. But a Google Suite, which used to be called Google Apps for Education, is a managed application of Google. So what that means is in terms of privacy, it's more secure, there are less, um, there's less possibility of people coming across your site and your document, your documents, unless you've made them publicly visible. So I'm showing you here, this is my account on our G Suite. You can see here that the domain for our G Suite is called warwicklanguage.org.uk and I have an account on there. And you can see that there is information here that I'm just showing you through the um, account help um, about exactly how your um, account is managed. So this is managed locally. I'm an administrator for the account and we can add members of staff who want to perhaps use Google tools, but in a more secure way than just using their public open um, Google accounts. Doesn't mean you need to um, get rid of your accounts. I have many different accounts, but it does mean that the one that you're using perhaps for virtual exchange is more protected. Um, so in terms of complying with GDPR, that's really helpful. So as you can see, when I open my Google Apps, and this is, will look very similar to um, your normal Google account, I have access to all of these applications and more. Um, and the usual things that I would expect to see are there. And what I can do here is very quickly move into my Google Drive. Um, a Google Suite has more storage space allocated. So um, you may have already reached the point where your normal Google account is running out of space. Uh, Google Suite has a lot more storage allowance. So if I go to my drive and I'm going to follow the um, procedure that Rob was explaining yesterday about ePortfolios. So what he'd made is a new folder. And within this folder, let's just show you how that process works. It's very quick and very easy. Within this folder, he was going to create his uh, files and then share those with his students. Now, my demo folder, you can see here, this shows me the default for creating a folder within G Suite. So, the assumption here is that within my G Suite account, other people who share the same uh, G Suite are going to be quick and easy to share with. It's going to help me find them very easily. But it doesn't stop me from sh adjusting the sharing settings and sharing things totally openly if I want to do so. But the default permissions will be shared to other people who have access If I go into the sharing settings here uh, and click advanced, I can look at all the different possibilities. You can see here that the default is that people with a shared access to this domain will find it more easily. But if I click change, I can take that and make it public. It will provide a warning and say, you realize that people outside of your domain can access. If that's something I'm comfortable with, I can do that. And I can also change the level of access that people will have. Or I can just share things with specific people and limit it even further. But that advanced setting is very important to check when you're checking your sharing settings. Otherwise, you will be continually bombarded with requests from people to access things that you think they have access to. So once I've created the folder, I can then start creating documents within this, or I can upload the single document, perhaps the, the, the one that Rob um, shared with us as a file 
that he's shared with us already. This is a Word document. Now, when I come into this, I might want to leave it as a Word document, or I can convert it straight into a Google Doc for others to see as well. So what I'm going to do is to add Open with Google Docs to this so that it can become a Google document as well. And that allows me to have a little bit more interaction um, with it and to share it with others. So as we can see, by default, anybody within my domain is able to see this. So if I start to type the name of another colleague who is in the same domain, I can share it directly with her. and send an invitation to her. So next time she is logged on to the G Suite, she will get a notification that says this has been shared with you. And she can see that document. Now, as Rob was explaining yesterday, you may want to edit this and remove parts and just use parts that apply to you. But equally, you could just make copies of it uh, once you've edited it or whatever, and then set it to individual people. Creating a folder, if we go back to our um, earlier folder scenario, here's my folder, demo folder. Creating a folder is, is not the same in a Google way of doing things as it is in a Microsoft way of doing things. So in, in effect, what Google does when you put a document within a folder is to add additional metadata to that document so that you can come back at any point and search for that document on your drive. So if I go back to my drive, you can see here now I have two copies of that document, one that is the Word document and one that opens in Google Docs. You can see the change of icon there. So people can download it still as a Word document directly from here if they wish to do so. Um, I'm not going to work with notifications for the moment. But you can see here I'm just being told what I've done. So I can create additional files of lots of different types according to the apps that I have available and then make them available and share them with different people. And I can manage those sharing settings here so if I come to back to that document again, I've always got a way of accessing who has access to the document. I can see that very clearly. I can see the detail of that there. And of course, these links give us more detail. But this advanced tab is probably the most useful because they're a list of everybody who has access to the document is provided. So that's quite a useful um, way of just checking who has access. One of the biggest problems that we find with people using Google Suite is that they're not actually aware who they are at any particular moment in time or who the browser thinks they are at any particular moment in time. So although Claude has access to this document in order to see it, and to edit it, to do anything with it, she needs to be signed into her browser with this identity. So how do we get people to check that? Well, it's as simple as just telling people to look to the top right. And there you can see who the browser thinks you are. Now, when you have multiple identities, Chrome as a browser is very helpful here because as you can see, if I click on this top, profile picture. It's showing me who the browser is seeing me as at the moment, but it's also showing me other accesses that I have. And I can quite quickly move between those different um, accounts that I have. So this is a, a, a work related, but not private, not totally private um, account. And you can use the Manage People um, link here. And that's a way here of moving between these and adding new accounts if you have different accounts. Uh, 
that's a very quick and easy way of moving between your various identities within Google. And if ever you click on a link someone shared with you and you can't see it or you have to request permissions, the issue is down to how they've shared and who exactly they've shared the account with. So on your side, you can check that by looking to the top right hand corner, see who the browser thinks you are. And on the side of the sharer, they can check that by looking at the document and coming into the advanced settings and check exactly which identity they've shared with. Now, all of these things are really important if you're going to have a, a smooth um, access to things that you've created and shared within Google actually understanding who you are and who the browser thinks you are at any particular moment in time and which account and therefore which email address is associated with that account. So you can see here that my identity has an email address connected to it. So following those two um, hopefully quite straightforward bits of information you should be able to troubleshoot any issues that you have using uh, a Google Suite 